as the Steelers get ready to play the Baltimore Ravens, the big question is, who will the Ravens play knowing that they've locked up the one seed? We'll answer that and talk about Minka Fitzpatrick's potential return here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. It's Crossover Thursday. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making, for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. So we can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL to use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first prize match up to $100. Now, this is an editing note because I've had to go back and do this episode i recorded the crossover thursday episode and we'll get to all of that in just a minute but in the right as soon as we ended recording it lamar jackson was announced to be benched for the game john harbaugh announced that tyler huntley would be starting for the ravens at quarterback so now we know that that's the case we did not know that that was the case we were thinking it might be the case when we started the recording recording the show so we explored the possibility so just a full recap of everything so you understand whenever we say lamar jackson maybe might whatever that is because we weren't a hundred percent sure. Uh, we were. I, I felt it was. I was confident that it, it would probably happen because you'd have to protect your quarterback. So just please make that note as these conversations continue. But that is a big talking point for sure. Lamar Jackson not playing backup quarterback there. Now the question will be, as we'll see throughout the week, how many other Ravens starters might sit. Kevin Ostriker has some thoughts on who might sit. We'll talk about that with him on the rest of this crossover Thursday episode. Let's get into it, uh, Kevin. This is uh this is this is uh, I know that there was a lot of celebrating going on in the Ravens locker room after the beatdown that they handed the Miami Dolphins, the locking up of the one seed. Uh, but now the question now turns to how hard will they will they try to will they will they try to go this game? Of course, they want to win this game. This is their rival. There's the classic saying, you're not a Raven until you've beaten the Pittsburgh Steelers. But this is a week where in a league where everyone's going down, it's just the Dolphins just lost two key starters. The, the entire AFC North, it, it, Lamar Jack is the only AFC North quarterback that's still healthy right now. Um, you look at the entire at the entirety of that. Are, is there a sense from the Ravens they're going to protect a lot of their key playmakers for this game and maybe rest them against the Steelers? Yeah, there hasn't been any official word yet. On the on whether the Ravens will rest guys or not. Now we're recording this before the Ravens finish up their Wednesday practice. So maybe by the time anybody's listening to this, John Harbaugh would have provided more clarification. But if I had to assume the Ravens are dealing with a bit of, I guess, banged upness where mm. they've had guys all season. They haven't necessarily lost a ton of guys. There's not as many as we've seen over the past four years to season ending injuries obviously mark andrews although there maybe is a glimmer of hope he could come back for the playoffs not entirely sure yet there but really the only other guys who have been lost for the season jk dobbins in week one keaton mitchell david ajabo and i mean that's really it the ravens designated slot corner are darius washington to return from injured reserve today so we'll see what his practice window and timeline is but for example kyle hamilton dealing with the knee injury sprained mcl I assume the Ravens will definitely rest him in this one with nothing to play for. The Ravens, you talked about it, locked into that one seed. Record-wise, does not matter if the Ravens lose to the Steelers or beat them. But obviously, everybody in Baltimore, we know what this rivalry is, Chris. The Ravens, they want to beat the Steelers. Ravens fans want to beat the Steelers. But Patrick Queen's been dealing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. Marlon Humphrey got injured last week against the Dolphins. Those guys aren't going to play. But the key one to everybody is the Moore Jackson. Of course. Because right now... Nobody is, I guess, healthy at this time of year, but in terms of an injury on the injury report of him looking banged up, he's, he's good to go. But in my opinion, and again, maybe we'll get more clarification on this from John Harbaugh, but to me, Lamar is just too important to the Ravens. You know, talking about him as an MVP, and to, in my opinion, he is the most valuable player to a team in the NFL. We know Pittsburgh has a pass rush. We know who TJ Watt is. We know who Alex Highsmith is. Those guys are good, good, good football players. If they beat, let's say the Ravens don't play their offensive linemen, let's say Ronnie Stanley gets rest, Morgan Moses gets rest, well, the Steelers have something to play for. They're going to bring their guys. They're going to bring the heat. It. Can you trust T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith to get past those back of offensive linemen? I would if I were the Pittsburgh Steelers. So 
if you're playing the more of the backup offensive line, it just doesn't make much sense to me if that's the position you go. Tyler Linderbaum's been playing great all season. Do you rest him, put in a backup? So in my opinion, they should definitely rest Lamar. Now, that doesn't mean I think the Ravens have no shot to beat the Steelers. I think it's still going to be a competitive game nonetheless. Division. And Tyler Huntley's come in, and he's won some games for the Ravens in Lamar's mm-hmm. absence. So mm-hmm. even if Lamar plays a quarter, a couple drives, a half, I just don't know if that's the smartest decision for them. Obviously, Chris, we were in the same situation four years ago when the Ravens locked up the number one seed, and it was week 17 back then, not week 18. But the Ravens decided to rest everybody they could and just get ready for that division around matchup. And there's the whole conversation about rest versus rust. I know a lot of people are very wary about what happened in 2019 and, and how poorly that season ended. 2006 also went very poorly for the Ravens when they hosted the division around there at MT Bank. So to me, I'd rest the starters. I know that's what Pittsburgh wants, right? That gives them the better shot to win. But again, it doesn't hand them a win. They have still have to go out there and earn if that is the case. Absolutely. And and listen, we've talked about this how many times now? Like the Steelers and the Ravens, no matter how bad or good one or the other is, these two teams take each other to the mat. Like they're like these, it is it is often a dog fight to the end. And that's what I'm fully expecting in this matchup, regardless of who Baltimore plays. Uh, but another factor where I think that it would behoove the Ravens to 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 rest Lamar Jackson, specifically Lamar Jackson, even uh, not even considering Patrick Queen and everyone else who's dealing with banged upness. Lamar Jackson this this year has a 102.7 pass rating career 98 pass rating when he plays the pittsburgh steelers his pass rating is 66.8 he's been sacked 20 times in his career against the steelers in fact the only time that he's won as a starter was when he faced mason Rudolph, who got he got knocked out in that game and devlin hodges came in and that was i believe an overtime win uh that the, that, that the ravens won and that one way back in 2019 that's the only time that he's won a start against the steelers and, and not the winning part of it but it's like what you said. The Steelers pass rush, you know, can get active. Uh, you, you know, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, the emergence of Nick Herbig. Uh, they're, they, and also, they know how to play Lamar Jackson. Like, it's beyond just their talent. The Steelers and the Ravens know each other. And Lamar Jackson, That's the Steelers are the one team that he has not gone bonkers against in, in any game. Um, and I think that that's where, if I'm the Ravens, I say, hey, we're going to rest him this week. Make sure that he's fully healthy. We've seen all the quarterbacks get injured this year. Um, you know, even just in the AFC North, let's and let's make sure he's good. Let's. And if I'm the Ravens, I'm also protecting Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Marlon Humphrey, Kyle Hamilton, all those key players, um, because you want to make sure that your crew is able to come back fresh. You know, you know that your team can win. That they they've been dominant all year long. Uh, so I I feel like that is where you probably lean here now. I say all that to say, if you're the Ravens, also, you still even if your backups play, you you're fighting like like heck to win this game because you're what thirteen and three on the season. Two of those three losses are to the AFC North in the Browns and and the Steelers. If anything, you would prefer to not have to face either of those teams. The Browns are already locked into the five seed. Technically, they could be, they could be the six seed if the Dolphins lose, and there's a whole scenario there. But, um. But point is, the Browns are in the playoffs, and you know at some point either you're going to have to worry about them or worry about them being knocked off by somebody else. But the Steelers are another team that they're not as talented as the Ravens. Their roster is not as complete as the Ravens. But you know that when those two teams play, no matter where they are, each other are, it is going to be a dogfight. And I think that the Ravens probably look at, I'd rather take on the struggling Chiefs, the up-and-down Bills, or the Dolphins that you just beat by 40 points than take on division rivals who you know are going to give you a fight to the bitter end. And I, it's something I've been saying because a stat that, you know, everybody's obsessed with now, at least, is, you know, Lamar is 20 and one against the NFC. And part of that, mm-hmm. I think, is because they just don't see him a lot. You know, some it's sometimes those players first times playing against them. Maybe they played against them once before. I think there is it's not taking away from what Lamar's done. He's obviously earned that record. But when you play a division rival time after time, again, it can go one of two ways, right? You figure it out or they figure you out. And I think for the Ravens and Steelers, the Ravens have still won games against the Steelers. I mean, mm-hmm. I agree. If there's, if you pick one team who Lamar has struggled against in his career, if you only have one choice, it is Pittsburgh. It is that mm-hmm. defense. And those stats will back it up too. The eye test will back it up as well. But against teams like the Bengals and the Browns, Lamar has dominated both those teams. So I think it's a credit to Pittsburgh and and how they've been able to kind of get after Lamar and look, TJ Watt. I mean, it's a, he's a big part of it. They obviously have talented playmakers there, 
So to play a division rival three times in one year, I mean, look, Baltimore and Pittsburgh have done it many times over the course of their franchise history, you know, back in those early, late 2000s, whatever you want to say, you know, the Ravens and Steelers have matched up three times in a season, twice in the regular season, and then once again in the playoffs. Now, the thing with Baltimore is I just think there's such a gap between them and any other team where you're right. I, I would rather play the Chiefs, I think, because, you know, I think even though the Ravens are going to be favored probably in every single game here. You know, FanDuel or fa friends over there are probably going to have them favored. There is an element of this where, look, it doesn't matter how good you are in the regular season. It, it doesn't. Because once you hit the playoffs, it's a whole new season. It doesn't matter how well you play in the regular season. You can be the best team in the regular season like we saw the Ravens do in 2019. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Mm -hmm. They weren't the best team in the playoffs. And that's why here in Baltimore, we don't talk about that 2019 team the way we should because I think maybe whether they were looking ahead to the championship game or, you know, they just had too much rest, it, it doesn't matter. But whoever comes into M&T Bank Stadium in the divisional round, is going to be it's going to be this. Ravens are going to have the rest, and that one team who's coming in is going to have a really good win probably and, and be charged up off of that momentum. So it's a battle of that. But to me, Pittsburgh right now, if, May, if Mason Rudolph can prove to be the guy – and he can prove that, hey, you know what? This this isn't just a two week fluke, and you know, leads the Steelers to the playoffs here. Steelers can sneak in. I mean, again, you can't count out anybody. But to me, I just think Baltimore, and this isn't just a Steeler thing. Baltimore is just too far ahead of everybody in the AFC for me to say, you know, any team can go in there and beat them. Because I think my expectations have changed, Chris. Where I used to just say AFC Championship or bust. I think they've been so good this year. Where if they don't make the Super Bowl. Super Bowl you really have to question because they've passed all the tests and now they're the test. I feel you. They are the test right now. I mean, and they, they've proven it because, you know, I looked at, you know, going into the final part of the season, I looked at the Ravens end of the end of the season schedule. And I was like, there's space for the Ravens to kind of mess things up. They were at the Jaguars then the Jaguars fell off. Uh, and, but then you're at, you're at the Niners and you smoke the Niners and then you're hosting the Dolphins and you smoke the Dolphins. And again, not just, not just eat those out. You held all the, the Ravens held all three of those opponents to less than 20 points and then scored more than 30 in against two of them. So, um, and they've scored more than 30 points, three of the last four games they played. So yeah, it was a, it was they're playing the schedule. best. Yeah. yeah. It's a playoff schedule. They're playing the best football in the NFL right now. And that shouldn't be, should be slighted, but we got to talk about other situations. The Steelers might get back two key starters for this game on defense. We'll talk about that and other key matchups and just how hot this division is right now here on the locked on podcast network. It's crossover Thursday. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Life is full of twists and turns, and it's important to show up for yourself through all of them. I faced plenty of times in my life when I've tried to shoulder on burdens, but found answers thanks to the help of good therapists. That's where BetterHelp Online Therapy comes in, because they will assess your needs, and they can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done online, available to people worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist whenever you need help. And with therapy, they know that it can take a few tries to find the right fit for you. That's why BetterHelp makes it easy and free to change therapists if needed. And they have a special offer for all our listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Locked on. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash locked on. Back here on Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network, it's Chris Carter and Kevin Ostriker of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Ravens. Kevin, the Steelers, it's not official yet as of now, but we have gotten the reports that Minka Fitzpatrick and Landon Roberts, Steelers starting safety and linebacker, are back and healthy at practice, at least working through practice on, on uh, Wednesday as we record this Wednesday afternoons. We, we don't have either team's injury report for Wednesday as we're recording this earlier in the afternoon, but that's a big help to the Steelers who their defense has been strung together by scotch tape with uh, with the injuries that they've had. They've had practice squatter upon practice squatter upon practice squatter. Patrick Peterson went from a starting corner to being a starting safety because they needed help back there because uh, between Minka Fitzpatrick, DeMonte, KZ, Keanu Neal, Elijah Riley, and Trenton Thompson, they were down five safeties for the past couple past few weeks, past month really. And 
getting the, getting those guys, getting him, getting Minka Fitzpatrick just as one safety as their best safety. Um, and I believe he's just back, actually been nominated to the Pro Bowl. Uh, but to getting him back would be a boost just to give them at least one guy back there that can call the shots. And then a Landon Roberts, who had been arguably their best linebacker this year, he looked like he might be out for the season with a peck injury, but he looks like he, he could return this week. That could be huge for a Steelers defense that, like you said, even if Lamar Jackson doesn't play, Huntley knows this offense, and this is a Ravens offense that when you look at it across the board, they're – they're the second scoring offense. They're the fourth, you know, fourth when it comes to yards, um, and they're the number one rushing offense in the in the NFL. They're gonna. It's still gonna take an all hands on deck efforts from the Steelers defense to limit this group. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for the Ravens, you you have talent all across the board, and that's what's helped them get to where they are this year. So when you talk about resting guys and doing all this, Steelers are getting reinforcements, and the Ravens, I think, are, are kind of taking this approach where look. If it's the case where they don't have anything to play for, they can rest their guys and still feel confident because players like when Marcus Williams had to miss a bunch of the season, Geno Stone stepped up. He's second in the NFL right now with seven interceptions. Guys like Brandon Stevens have really stepped up. I wouldn't expect him to play in this game. But then other guys, Ronald Darby, who they signed essentially a couple weeks before the season for some depth, has played really, really well as a depth piece. But when you talk about the Ravens offense, one area that has actually impressed me is the offensive line depth. And Ronnie Stanley's had his struggles at times here, but I think it all starts up front with an offensive line. And for the Ravens, Patrick McCarry, the Ravens do a rotation is, is what they've been doing with their offensive line. So Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses will start the game. And then maybe after a couple of drives, Stanley will come out and Patrick McCarry will come in. Then McCarry will go out, Stanley will come back in, but then Moses comes out and then back up right tackle, Daniel Falele comes in and they mm. interchange those guys throughout the game. Now, would they do that if Stanley and Moses rest in this game? And I just think they give Falele and McCarry all the reps. But let's say Zay Flowers doesn't play. They've had other guys. Nelson Aguilar was someone who was signed by the Ravens. It was their first signing and everybody lost their minds in Baltimore because it was, they can't do it again. It's this veteran (laughs) receiver, Sammy Watkins and Michael Crabtree, and it's it's happening again. And I said, I hear you. It can't be the move, but it can be a move. And luckily the Ravens then brought in Odell. They drafted Zay Flowers, and it was fine. Aguilar has been awesome as like a fourth wide receiver for them. Odell, I don't think maybe he won't play in this game. Aguilar, Tyler Wallace. So Steelers are getting back reinforcements. But again, for Tyler Huntley, the big question with him, and if you're just kind of scouting that out if Lamar doesn't play, his deep ball has not been great. Some of his decision-making has not been great either. Now, we haven't really seen Huntley start a game this year, luckily, because Lamar has been healthy. But this is a time for Tyler Huntley. We've been talking here in Baltimore. Maybe this is Tyler's last year because they bring in Malik Cunningham from the Patriots and Huntley's a free agent after the season. Is this maybe an audition if Tyler Huntley plays against a really good Steelers defense who, again, are getting some guys back? So while the Ravens don't have anything to play for from a standings perspective or a seeding perspective, no team in the NFL, no player in the NFL will just lie down and let it right. take it from them. Right. Exactly. This, this means a lot to those guys, whether it's tape, whether it's auditions, whether it's pride. The Ravens are going to try to win regardless of who plays. But look, we know Pittsburgh has something to play for. They're not going to lay down. They want their season to continue into January. Absolutely. That's the thing. Both of these teams are going to want this win. I think the, the the question is, you know, for the Ravens, it's, it's not about want. It's about making sure that you're healthy for the games that actually matter because you throw everything you got into this game and then you lose, say, you know, Marlon Humphrey, you lose Roquan Smith or Lamar Jackson or anybody, then you're going to be looking at like, why did we do that? And that's just a realistic approach there that I, you know, I think that everyone's looking like they, they're going to at least rest most of those of those big name guys, not all of them, but enough of them uh, to, to protect them uh, down that stretch. And I also got to say, you know, this is right now. I think you you can say this is if it's not the best division in football, I think it is. It's the hottest division in football. You look at the way that the the, 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 the three teams that are that are either in the playoffs or fighting for the playoffs right now have played uh, at least the last two weeks. The Steelers have won their last two with scoring thirty points each. They they were struggling the three games before that, but the Ravens have won what six in a row now. Uh, the the Browns have won four in a, four in a row, and you look at how how these teams have played down the stretch here. If the AFC North does get three playoff teams here, I think there's a there's there's somewhat of a likelihood that there might be an AFC North AFC championship game 
with all the because I'm not I, there's no team in the AFC that I view out as the ultimate powerhouse uh, outside of the Ravens like we did like we did the Chiefs when the when when Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, and, and Hill were in their prime, or even like you know the Bengals were supposed to be this year with Burrow and Chase and Higgins and all their guys, or like the Bills were supposed to be with Allen and Diggs and and, and all their crew. So you look at all those teams like. Every one of those other teams in the AFC, AFC that are, are, are that are supposed front runners, I think every single AFC North team can not only hang with but beat them. And heck, the Ravens beat the Dolphins soundly, uh, you know, just, just this past weekend. I, I think that the Browns and the Steelers could give all of them a run for their money, and it's a, it's a very notable sign. We talked about this before the season, Kevin, but I think the, the AFC North has lived up to the hype as far as the talent of the division. Yeah, I think he got off to a bit of a slower start than some people sure. might have might have anticipated. But again, you talk about the health situations, and this is exactly what we were talking about with the Bengals back when they went to the Super Bowl. Health is a key part in every single sport, not just football, every sport. The Ravens in 2019, I think, had two major injuries the entire season. It was Pernell McPhee and Tavon Young. They kept their entire roster healthy for the most part, and then the division around, they lost a couple of guys. Or a couple of guys got injured, Mark Andrews, Mark Ingram really had an impact on what they played that game. I mean, you can talk about how I think for sure the playoffs are fun for that reason, where any team can beat any team. It's kind of like any given Sunday, but like maximized by like 10 times because you go out there and you don't play your best game. You don't get next week. You're, you're mm -hmm. done. It's it. So it's different than basketball and different than baseball where you have the five game series, the seven game series. It, it, that's it. You can even talk about basketball where we just saw literally last year, M Milwaukee Bucks, they're the one yeah. seed. They yeah. have the whole thing going for them. Miami comes in there as this like gritty team, right? That no one gives them a chance and they knock them off. It wasn't even seven games. It was <laughs> five games. Like it, it was unreal. People don't know this about me, but I've been a Heat fan since like since they drafted Dwayne Wade oh, back in man. 03. So like that uh, that during that run, I was losing. I was like Jimmy buckets, uh, like yeah. So, but but to your point, we've seen that. Like like we've seen it. Heck, we've seen some of these teams do it. The Steelers when they won the Super Bowl and Super Bowl forty, they were they were the first team that was a wild card to go all the way and and win a Super Bowl and, and win three straight road games. Not that this Steelers team is going to do that, but I'm saying. There are and there, there are plenty of teams that, and it's not it's become more common because I think the Packers did it when they beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. I think the Giants did it when they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. There's been more and more times that it's happened now. I think it's part of it's also you know the you know the lack of disparity between the top and the bottom in the NFL. There's 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 a lot more parity right now, and with that parity, you see teams being able to dig at each other more often. And I think that's that's a realistic thing. And you know we always say the NFL is a week to week league. You go, you 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 could be on top of the world one moment and out of it the out of it the next. That's another thing that I think you you have a very good point about. The Ravens don't want to be that team that that got ice cold after such a great season because you're right. You know, not only in a conference championship appearance, getting to the Super Bowl it, it needs needs to be part of the goal. Winning the Super Bowl needs to be part of the goal because you you have something right now with Lamar Jackson. You have something now with the with the players around him and the things that you developed. You don't you don't know if you if you get those chances again. The, the, for example, we did the AFC North breakdown and everything. Every one of us picked the Bengals to win the division. Now they're out of the playoffs. There's talk about T. Higgins not being able to return, being able to return. Who knows what direction that franchise will go? While the other three teams are fighting for the playoffs and growing this year, it's just it is such a week to week league and a year to year league. Yeah, one hundred percent. And to me, I think that look. The Ravens, they've played so well. They have too much talent. And they've passed every single test to me to say, well, I, they're my Super Bowl pick for right now because of how well they've played. I think that this team is different from 2019. But if that happens again to them, if they lose their first playoff game, if they don't make it to the Super Bowl, there have to be some conversations because, again, expectations change throughout the season. But I still believe in the Ravens that they can get the job done. But you you can't overlook anybody, which they've done a good job. That they've been locked in all season. The vibes have been good, and that's another part to winning a Super Bowl. It's not just you know how you play on the field, but sometimes those distractions can get pretty distracting, and it, it takes away from what happens for a really good football team. So I think Baltimore has it in them, but you can't look too far ahead if you're this Ravens team because other teams want to win it too, and they don't care how good your regular season was. All they have to do is beat you in the playoffs, and that's all it takes. Absolutely. We'll get to some of the key matchups in this game to see who does who, who does have some key advantages. All that here and more on Crossover Thursday here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Chris Carter, Kevin Ostracker, stick with us. we got a lot to discuss. 
But first, I want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You need, to, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. That's where LinkedIn Jobs comes in to make it easier to find people that you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job on the purple hashtag hiring frame for your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Back here on Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network, Chris Carter, Kevin Ostriker of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Ravens. Let's talk about some key matchups here. So you mentioned the potential of resting offensive tackles. Let's say let's say they start versus the backups play. What is the biggest concern that you have uh, for for matchup wise? If 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 you know it, considering the Steelers have the edge rushers that they do right now, Kevin. Yeah, well, either way, I think that it's going to be a tough task regardless. Now, the thing with the Ravens, and it's really weird to say, but Ronnie Stanley arguably has been their weakest starting offensive lineman this year. And honestly, it's probably not even arguable. I think it is a fact that he has been. And we all know what happened all those years ago, really now, Chris, against Pittsburgh, where TJ Watt gets thrown into him, and it's a really unfortunate injury. And this is essentially two years because of it. And he's been dealing with a knee injury this year. It's a little different where he's had to go in and out of the lineup a couple times this season. The anchor hasn't been there as, as much as we would like here in Baltimore. But I think the rotation has actually helped, and Ronnie Stanley has said as much. So for me, if Stanley starts, it's about just getting him the rest in the game he needs so he can be it in, in tip-top shape. Same thing with Morgan Moses. But again, TJ Watt has so many different moves. He's so strong. I mean, you can line him up against any one of these guys and, and he'll take their lunches. It's not a matter of if he'll do it, it's when. And you can, can try to slow him down, but he's it's it's like Miles Garrett. It's like Aaron Donald. These guys are going to get theirs eventually now against the Rams. The Ravens did a really good job. Aaron Donald did not report a stat, actually. It was one pass deflection. But I think that when you're the Ravens and you have this situation – you also have to look at the interior, and the interior has been playing pretty well this year. Tyler Linderbaum's at an all-pro level. Kevin Zeitler is as steady as ever. John Simpson's been pretty good there, but I think it's outside here where Daniel Falele is a huge mountain of a man offensive tackle, can pull out into space and do his thing. He's athletic. But, you know, for me, is he going to be able to hold down uh, Alex Highsmith or TJ Watt for an entire game? And if they do rest Stanley, they do rest Moses, it'll be Patrick McCarry on the left side, who has been really, really steady and I think it was Von Miller. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Von Miller who said that he's one of the best tackles in the league a couple of years ago when he was still mm -hmm. with Denver. So those two guys are still more than serviceable. But again, if it's not Stanley, it's not Moses, it'll be those two guys. If not Linderbaum, Sam Mustafer would probably start, who had a really bad time in Chicago, but has played really well in Baltimore. Maybe that's just playing for the Bears. And that's just what happens when you play for the Bears. But I think that at this point, the Ravens still have – really quality offensive line depth and i've been surprised at how they've played this year yeah i mean i think that's part of it is you need depth and you need execution but when you see those rushing stats for the ravens it's not just lamar jackson and keaton mitchell and whoever else they just throw in at running back i think part of the reason you see so many running backs go in there and have success is because their offensive line is able to move people and, and i think tyler linderbaum plays a big big factor in that um i think one thing that you that you see i think that's you know, on both sides, you don't you take each each other very seriously. Cam Hayward came out to the Steelers locker room on uh, on Wednesday and said and said, "Hey, we remember losing to the 2019 Ravens when they lost it when they when they rested pretty much their whole team. We're not taking anybody lightly right right, right now." And that wasn't that game. That game wasn't even close. They lost 28 to 10. Granted, the Steelers were at a different spot with Devlin Hodges starting, and that team was kind of out of gas at the end of a season where it was remarkable they fought to eight wins in the first place with all the things they had going against them. This team feels very different for the Steelers. You got. Mason Rudolph, yes, but he's playing very well. The offense has scored 30 points for back-to-back -back games in the first time since 2020. Uh, the defense, despite missing a, a ton, a ton of starters, they've been playing very well. They're still a top. They're still with the seventh-best scoring defense in the NFL right now. 
Uh, this is still a Steelers team that I think isn't looking at, at this neither as a light game, but neither as a game that like, oh man, we just need to we we just need to get 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 a little bit more gas to get over the hump. I, I think the Steelers team is hungry and they're trying to prove something uh in, in this game. And I think the Ravens, we try to prove something too. Like I, I don't think this is gonna again, I think this game is gonna be a lot closer than anyone who thinks the Ravens are gonna bowl over the Steelers or anyone who thinks the, the Ravens backups are gonna just lay down for the steel for, for the Steelers. I think that this is gonna be a classic AFC North fight that that everyone's watching on on Saturday at 4 30. And uh it's gonna be a fun one to watch for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And look no Ravens fan wants to see the Steelers win and no Steelers right. fan wants to see the Ravens win. I mean, it, right. it's just that simple where a lot of people, you know, they don't want here in Baltimore, the Steelers to get a sweep on the Ravens this year, regardless mm. of it doesn't mean anything for the Ravens in terms of the one seed and their seeding in the playoffs or anything like that. You don't want to lose the division rival. And again, as we kind of talked about earlier in the show, Chris, if the, if the backups do play, it's going to mean a lot to them. Right. It's good. Not that it wouldn't mean anything to the starters, but there are different reasons for everybody to play different reasons why everybody loves the game. And for a player like Tyler Huntley, as we talked earlier about in the show, is it an audition tape for him? He's going to ball mm -hmm. out if he wants to do that. If he wants to get on a team and try to win a starting job, he has to ball out. So I think it'll be a close game, too. I don't expect any type of different blowout here, but. I think it should be a good game, and it's on a Saturday, so it'll be a national spotlight, which will be interesting. Yeah, thanks, NFL, for giving us a Saturday game. So didn't have other plans that, that day to just be able to enjoy before the craziness of Sunday happens. Um, but, yeah, do you, I think I, I'm right with you on this. And to your point about wanting to beat the Steelers, the Steelers have won six of the last seven. The Ravens definitely want to prove something there. Like there's, there's still like they don't, they don't take that lightly. And you know, there were stretches where the Ravens got the best of the Steelers for quite, a, for quite some time. The Steelers would talk about that and be like, we got to get off the Schneid here. So that's definitely something there. We'll have our final previews and looks into this matchup here on our Friday episodes here on Locked On Steelers and Locked On Ravens. Chris Carter, Kevin Ostriker, thanks so much for joining us here on Crossover Thursday. We'll see you here back here on our channels. Remember, you can subscribe to our podcasts on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes. We are your team every day, whether you're listening to Locked On Steelers or Locked On, on Locked On Ravens. We'll see you then here on the Locked On Podcast Network. 